So Ackerman steering is the difference in the radius that the tyres have to travel through the corner. As we turn the steering wheel to the left, you can see that the outside wheel actually stops turning and then starts turning back the other way, while the inside wheel keeps on turning in the same direction. Okay, so that's how we're gonna adjust our Ackerman steering when we're at the track. Now, when are we gonna use these different effects? Hey guys, today's video we're gonna be showing you how to change the Ackerman steering on your go-kart, the effects it has on the handling, and when to use it. So Ackerman steering is the difference in the radius that the tires have to travel through the corner. There's a really technical explanation of the fundamentals or the theory of Ackerman about imaginary points and different radiuses, but that's not what we're about here. What we're about is the simple effects of Ackerman, when to use it, and the effects it has on the go-kart. So for an easy visual representation, come on a little closer and have a look at what the wheels do when you turn the steering. So to give you a quick visual representation of what's going on when you turn the steering wheel and using the Ackerman that's built into the cart, as we turn the steering wheel to the left, you can see that the outside wheel actually stops turning and then starts turning back the other way, while the inside wheel keeps on turning in the same direction. So in basic terms, what the Ackerman does is when you turn the steering wheel, that outside wheel is gonna stop turning and start going back on itself while the inside wheel keeps on turning. So first up, let's have a look at how we change the Ackerman when we're at the go-kart track. So on some carts and models, there's some holes over on the stub axles that you can choose to change your Ackerman slash steering leverage slash sensitivity. But on a Tony Kart, we've only got the steering column. So if you do want any more steering leverage for your Tony Kart, you can get yourself a slotted steering column, or what they call a slotted steering column. It's just got a slot in the bottom of the steering bell, as you can see here, and it's got a little bit more leverage, as in the steering bell is a little bit longer. As you can see, the one here on the right with the slots in it has a longer steering bell, so it's gonna give you a little bit more sensitivity, a bit more jacking when you go to those bottom holes. So we're already in the bottom position. That is the most common for most go-karts that I work on anyway. but. If you do want to adjust it, it's very simple. We're just going to loosen off the bolt and the nut, take the bolt out, and just slide these guys across. Sometimes I like to use the Allen key just to sort of locate everything. And then you can slide the bolt back in halfway. And then we're going to slide the special stepped washer back in underneath. Just pull that bolt back a little bit. And then you can push that through, put on the nut, and do it up nice and tight. And then it's the same for the other side. So I know what you're thinking, what the heck does, how is that supposed to help me? Well, basically, if you want the maximum steering effect, maximum jacking, we're gonna put the tie rods into the bottom position on your steering column. And then if you want a lighter steering feel, we're gonna move it into the top position. And that's gonna give us the least effect of the Ackerman on the go-kart when we're driving. Now, when are we gonna use these different effects? We've got the top position, which is the lightest, the least amount of jacking we're gonna get, the lighter sensitivity, and it's gonna deactivate the front to some degree relative to the other position, which is our bottom position on the steering column. That's gonna give us the most jacking. We're gonna use that when the track's super grippy or we've got some crazy understeer, or the cart's not rotating on some slow corners. With the smaller drivers, generally we can run the, in the top position. The bigger drivers, they're gonna go down on the belt to get a little bit more leverage or a little bit more mechanical jacking. Also too, in the wet weather conditions, we can use that bottom position. You can also use the slotted steering column for some extreme grippy conditions or if the cart's sitting crazy flat and you wanna to try to get that wheel up off the ground. Or if I've got something other than a Tony cart, it might already, might already have three or four different spots pre-drilled into it and you can use those too. Sometimes you just gotta retrofit them to your, your Tony cart. They will work as well. But basically what I'm saying is when the cart's steering too good, we're gonna go up on the steering column. If it's not steering good enough, we're gonna go down to our bottom positions. But go to your local track and try these things out for yourselves. 
It's not a complex change. Like all the things we try to teach you guys, we try to teach you the simple and effective things that you can do for yourselves when you're at the track, just to tune your car to make sure it suits you and you are winning and dominating you against your competition. So if you've liked this video, we're gonna to link to our other popular cart tuning videos in a little series for you guys. It's gonna be here, here, or down below in the comments section. If you haven't had enough of Dr. Power already, you can follow me along on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks to everyone that's liking and sharing the videos. It really means a lot to us. But if you do want us to make a video for you, maybe make a suggestion in the comments section below on what tuning tips you'd like us to talk about that are gonna help you win your next race. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.